am Dr. Romano, Professor of Organic Chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products. I want to do a question today that involves general chemistry and biology combined. Let's have a look. This is an unusual question. Kidney stones are composed of calcium phosphate. And about 50% of kidney stones will contain that. And 1,400 mLs of urine are produced each day. So I give you that information, that's good to know. Now in urine, approximately 0.10 grams of calcium per day is excreted. What I wanna do is to find the maximum phosphate in the urine before a stone forms. All right, and I gave you the KSP for calcium phosphate. It's one to the minus 25th. Where would I even start this? Well, since I gave you the KSP, we're going to write the KSP expression. Now, we, this group hasn't quite done that yet. And since you're learning your entire college education here, um, you just have to hold on before we get to it. But notice a KSP is nothing more than an equilibrium constant. It's products over the reactants. So notice we're gonna have calcium to the third, phosphate squared, and you don't use the solid. So there's the KSP expression. Now, we're gonna simply convert 0.10 grams of calcium we look up the mass, the mass is 40 grams, and you convert it into moles. Um, don't worry about the math. You can do this on a calculator. All I care about is you understanding the concept. So we get 0.10 over 40.1 moles. Now, the calcium concentration is those moles over the total liters. Well, what's the total liters of the solution? 1,400 mLs, which is 1.4 liters. With the calculator, I got 1.8 to the minus three molar. That's the calcium concentration. And we're there. Now we're just gonna go back and substitute in. We know the KSP is one to the minus 25. There's the calcium cubed and phosphate squared. So we're gonna divide and then we're gonna square root it. And I just set it up. That's the amount of phosphate that you have to exceed. Anything beyond this amount, then that would cause a stone to form. So you want to make sure you understand that that's the amount that causes a saturated solution. Anything beyond that point, if that's exceeded, then we get precipitation. All right, I hope that helps. You can see the rest of these questions in the Dat Destroyer and on the study group. Good day to you.